Do you feel like you are an emotional eater? Is that a way that you've defined your eating experience or maybe even defined yourself that you are an emotional eater? You definitely want to take a listen to this because we're going to be talking about what emotional eating is, what it isn't, ways that you can move away from using that as a description for yourself, and even ways to challenge the use of emotional eating as a way to describe your eating experience. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Catherine. I am a anti-diet dietitian and certified intuitive eating practitioner, and I'm so happy you are here. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe below, click like to this video, comment below too on anything you learn or anything that resonates, and let's dive in. So there are a lot of stories that are told in this culture about people's emotional eating problems. In fact, there's all kinds of coaches and programs out there that promise you that the end result is going to be to decrease your emotional eating. But what exactly does this mean? How do you define emotional eating? How do they define emotional eating? This is a question that I get asked a lot and one that I think is really important to consider in this conversation about emotional eating. So there is not a single universally agreed upon definition of what emotional eating is. So when folks are talking about it in this culture, no one knows what someone else is talking about. I have seen on the internet and in many other places that the definition of emotional eating or the way people describe it is often the experience of feeling an emotion and eating in response to that. Now, there's a lot more nuance to that that we're gonna dive into in just a moment here that I think is really important for you to understand, especially if you consider yourself to be an emotional eater, because we need to break it down. What does it mean? How do we define it? And is it even actually a thing? Do we need to begin challenging the notion of what emotional eating is? But before we dive in and start challenging the notion of what emotional eating is, it's really important to note that we cannot address emotional eating. If, some, if a food experience is being driven by emotions, if we're not first addressing if someone is getting enough food, this is because in the context of not having adequate nourishment, enough energy from food throughout the day, it is really common that things will happen that will drive us to eat. Maybe a difficult experience, maybe you feel anxious or sad or other emotions that feel really challenging to sit with and be with, and you might turn towards food. But you might be turning towards food because you're not actually getting enough food. So we can't actually work on the emotional drivers, if that's truly what's happening, until we focus first on adequate nourishment. That is step number one, always. The second thing that can be really helpful to think about if you consider yourself to be an emotional eater, if other people have told you such, is that there is actually nothing wrong with eating to soothe. In fact, this is a normal, natural behavior. What I'm not saying is that your experience with what you might define as emotional eating isn't distressing or really difficult to be with and navigate, but rather to normalize the experience of eating in the context of feeling emotions and eating as a way to soothe. This is something that we see children do, that this is something we do really from a young age. And it's often the culture that we exist in, the dieting culture that we exist in, that demonizes the experience of using food as a way to soothe. What I will say though, is that oftentimes for many folks, that is the only tool that they have. It's just food. They don't have other coping skills or mechanisms in place in order to navigate and manage really overwhelming, difficult emotions. And when that happens, that feels really tough. It's your only soothing tool or skill. So what we want to be working towards is not decreasing uh, that as an option, a tool, something that you can access if you are wanting to soothe through food, but rather to expand the different tools that you have in order to soothe and support yourself in the context of feeling difficult emotions. The third thing to consider is that we exist in a culture that is pretty consistently telling you through a whole variety of messages that feeling your feelings is not a good thing. Depending on how you've been socialized, this is something that's super common for many folks. And so we learn over time ways to suppress those emotions, even though they're there and that doesn't work. And so I also want you to consider 
that sometimes we are eating and feeling emotions and that is also totally okay. It doesn't mean that you are an emotional eater. It may mean that you are just feeling emotions and eating in the context of emotions and that just feels wrong because of all the messages that you've been given about why you shouldn't feel your emotions or how it's wrong to feel certain kinds of emotions. Lastly, I want you to consider that every eating experience that you will have will be an emotional eating experience. And let me get a little bit more specific than that. What I mean by that is you are a being that is constantly feeling and you are going to be feeling emotions while you're eating. And sometimes you might feel emotions that you consider to be positive, right? You might feel joy, pleasure, excitement. And it's usually only when we're feeling what we might consider to be negative emotions is when we call it emotional eating, right? We consider it something that's negative. But the more that we can normalize the experience of having emotions, eating in the context of experiencing emotions, the more that we can access what is actually going on. I know that if you have had an experience or many experiences throughout your life that were driven exclusively by emotions, it can feel so, so hard and so painful. So I really want to honor that and to make space for taking the label away from your eating experience. So some things to consider would be if you didn't call it emotional eating, what would be left for you to uncover? What are the questions that might help you to understand more of your experience? Might you be left with curiosity around whether or not you're restricting foods and how that's impacting your experience? Or you might you be left with the knowing or understanding that you might benefit from getting more support around navigating really difficult experiences that you've had or emotions that you feel. What might be left if you didn't name it emotional eating in regards to maybe you might be able to offer some self-compassion and some curiosity around your experience. Maybe what might be left to uncover is what has your experience been like of allowing yourself to feel your emotions and the messages that you've been given around them. There is so much opportunity when you take the label off of your eating experience as emotional eating and stop demonizing that, that you can then uncover and really begin to take steps to understand your experience, your relationship with food, and over time, decrease the experience. It doesn't mean that you aren't still going to be eating to soothe, because again, that's a normal, natural behavior, but that you will at least have options to be able to choose from. I'm so curious to know what has your experience been with emotional eating, if at all. Comment below, tell me if you've learned anything from this video, and also I'd love to hear more about your experience.